Can you even do that on TV? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 darkest comedy shows. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we've made our choices based on a mix of how dark the humor is, as well as the quality of the shows themselves. Number 10, Wilfred. So long, girl next door. Wilfred tells the story of Ryan, a man who sees his neighbor's dog as a man who wears a dog costume, while no one else does. It's adapted the plot of its Australian predecessor, but took on a much grimmer tone. When a series opens with the main character trying to commit suicide, you know you've got a pretty darkly humorous series. Because after we broke into his house, I think I may have left your wallet under the window. What? Throughout four seasons, this crude and rude dog provided a twisted light in Ryan's melancholy life. Dog jokes aren't in short supply, neither are sex, drug, and mental illness gags. If you love dogs, and who doesn't, this show should be on your watch list. And that's twisted. Number 9, Tim and Eric's Bedtime Stories. Ah! What the hell? Tim and Eric have no shortage of wonderfully hilarious and bizarre series. This one is easily the darkest, but no less hilarious or bizarre. It's an anthology of horror comedy stories, kind of like a humorous Twilight Zone. Some of these plots include a doctor who eats toes, a man who torments his neighbor until he agrees to hang out, and a man who decides he wants to be an adult baby. Get in your hands and knees, crawl around like a baby, do the goo-goo gaga. A successful mix of off-the-wall, gross-out, and shock humor raises this anthology above its contemporaries. Come to think of it, it's arguably too unique to really have any contemporaries. That's one of our best switchovers, don't you think, guys? Number 8, Rick and Morty. Morty. Hand me that screwdriver, huh? I'm almost finished making my ionic defibulizer, Morty. Everyone knows that Rick and Morty is one of the most creative comedies on television in the 2010s. But most viewers miss the philosophical themes that recur throughout the series. Rick is a scientist who travels through the multiverse with his bumbling but lovable grandson. You sold a gun to a murderer so you could play video games? Yeah, sure. I mean, if you spend all day shuffling words around, you can make anything sound bad, Morty. While doing so, he illustrates his apathy for other iterations of his family and even himself, with even his selfless acts turning out to be self-serving schemes. It takes a daring show to literally destroy its own universe in the sixth episode, but one of TV's best written comedies pulled it off in a way that provided the show with a unique and thought-provoking viewpoint. Yeah, I'd like to get a 10-piece McNugget and uh, a bunch of the Szechuan sauce, like as much as you're allowed to give me. Number seven, you're the worst. So, uh, what you heard about me? Nothing, just that you're the worst. Some of the best dark comedies work by utilizing a main character who is, well, an ass. Jimmy is a selfish and mean man who begins to fall for Gretchen, who is just as cynical and self-destructive as he is. Rounding out the cast are Lindsay, Gretchen's friend who married a man for money, and Edgar, Jimmy's roommate. This is our special thing. It's the last thing that's distracting us from the constant dangers of Jesus! The show tackles depression, PTSD, drug addiction, and infidelity, but never takes itself too seriously. Jimmy commonly expresses his extremely nihilistic views to anyone who will listen, but still won't fail to betray anything for his own self-serving purposes. He's the worst. Get it? Yes. Number six, Children's Hospital. I broke up with Glenn. What? Why? He's the hottest doctor at Children's. The missing apostrophe for its title is far from the most offensive thing about this comedy series. A satire of the all-too-common medical drama, on this series, most of the doctors are narcissistic, self-involved people who care little about their child patients. It can be a little disturbing when much of the comedy stems from treating sick youngsters, but the show is just so ludicrous it manages to work. Turns out that Blake here never went to medical school. We're just gonna add him to your interns today. Adapted from a web series, there's a huge amount of non sequiturs, fourth wall breaks, and fake commercials, always showing little regard for political correctness. And the babies that you have are probably yours. Please take them and, and raise them. Number five, baskets. Are you? You baskets? Could you even think of something more entertaining than a sad clown played by Zach Galifianakis? Playing a dual role as twins Chip and Dale Baskets, the series mostly focuses on Chip, a clown school dropout who returns home to California. The show turns dark when it revels in Chip's misery, which it does at almost every turn. And it features a brilliant turn from Louie Anderson as his mother. General Mischief. 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 We're you chasing a mouse around? With these talents, along with co-creator Louis C.K., the series reaches the heights of sad comedy by treating its main character like a punching bag, but somehow also endearing us to him. Maybe you should go check on them. I mean, you do cheer people up for a living. 
Number four, Bojack Horseman. Say when. When. Bojack is a depressed alcoholic former sitcom actor who's also a horse. Undoubtedly one of the most irreverent shows to be found on TV, it builds a world consisting of humans and animals living side by side with seriously dark undertones. Oh my god, oh my god, this is the worst. This feels awful. Like Rick and Morty, it revels in existential nihilism, both mocking and seriously portraying issues such as mental illness, death, and addiction in interesting and unique ways. Only after you give up everything can you begin to find a way to be happy. Seriously underrated and unlike anything else, it's a surprising roller coaster of emotion that can pack a joke full of emotional resonance and entertain at every turn. What does it have to do with me? Number three, South Park. People, people, calm down! This masterpiece of modern satire raises a middle finger to, well, everything. Nothing is off limits in the town of South Park, from Scientology to child abduction, and none of it is taken seriously. After two decades on the air, the show still manages to stay relevant, which is owed mostly to its week-long production process. The episodes are made only days before they air, allowing them to reflect current events more effectively and more boldly than any other show. Endlessly quotable and always shocking, there's much more to see here than just jokes about poop, although truthfully, those never get old. Dad, Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet. Number two, Louie. Listen to me. I know that's hard to hear. In 2017, the comedian behind this series confirmed multiple sexual misconduct allegations that were brought against him. While we in no way condone his behavior, it can't be denied that this, in hindsight, gives perspective to Louis. Louis C.K.'s stand-up style is marked by his pitch-black observational viewpoint on a variety of subjects, and the series translated that to screen perfectly. It's life is bigger than you, It's if you can imagine that. Though it marries a plethora of comedic styles, it actually, more than anything, basks in its darkness. Whether he's telling a story about sex, fatherhood, or day-to-day -day life, there's a razor-sharp edge to things. It's not always easy to watch, especially following those real-life revelations, but the laughs and social commentary are definitely there. I'm gonna tell her you said that. That's okay, you tell her. I'll take the heat. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Satan's coming to dinner. That was last week. <laughs> hey, kids. Hi, Charlie. Today, me and him are going to teach you all about candy and yummy snacks. Yay! Number one, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. You know, I love you guys very much. Sometimes you're not that cool. Not cool. Okay, try to be cool. This series began in 2005 with an episode titled The Gang Gets Racist. With a start like that, there was no doubt it would venture into some pretty edgy territory later on, and it didn't disappoint. What the hell is that? It's a baby we found in the trash. Well, put it back. It doesn't belong to you. Following the misadventures of five friends who own a bar, the show sees these sociopaths proving to have little to no understanding of what's acceptable. You feel it! Do you feel the spirit? Do you feel the invisible things around you that don't really exist? Oh. Watching them work out their idiotic schemes results in comic gold time and time again, tactfully edging the line between hilarious and straight up offensive. Terrible people have never been quite this fun to watch. That's <laughs> what makes it funny! Tasteless. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.